Thank you very much. I am honored to introduce the video about Fada Busa in this opening session of the 15th International Conference on the History of the Language Sciences. I will do it playing two roles. First, as a pupil and friend of Fada Busa, and second, as the current director of the Circe Research Center on Computational Linguistics at Università Cattolica in Milan, which is the place where the legacy of the work of Fada Busa is today kept. I hope that you will forgive me if I will tell you a personal story to hold up a real example of what Fada Busa considered to be the unbreakable link between the study of language and the application of computational methods. I was fortunate enough to meet Father Roberto Busa even before I was born. Father Busa was a close family friend and someone I'd always seen as an old Jesuit who, they said, used computers to study Thomas Aquinas. When the time came for me to choose which university faculty to enroll in, my parents encouraged me to study medicine. To them, this represented a kind of solid qualification guaranteeing a fairly smooth career. But like many teenagers, I thought little about career opportunities and focused more on personal passions, in my case, Greek and Latin. And when I informed my parents of my interest in classics, I met with their disapproval, motivated primarily by an, an understandable concern for my future. In order to convince me not to go down the humanities route, I was sent to Father Busa, whose obvious wisdom would, according to my parents, guarantee my orientation towards anatomy rather than philology. Well, things didn't work out that way. To my question, Father, I'm thinking of studying classics, what do you think? Busa replied, good idea. It's always best to choose the least traveled road. My mother, who was present, realized immediately that she shouldn't have put the future of her only son in the hands of this 80-year-old Jesuit. And so the physician's white coat evaporated in favor of a Latin or Greek dictionary. For my part, I was delighted at the priest's words of approval. But just as I was leaving, Busa added, Mark, studying classics is the right thing to do, but only on one condition. You must buy a computer immediately and learn how to use it to analyze texts. I admit it, I thought it was a crazy idea. Among my reasons for choosing classics was in fact not having anything to do with all that computer stuff. And this man in the black cassock had just told me not only to buy one, but also to learn to use it to analyze a Chichero in Sophocles. Almost 30 years later, I am reminded every day just how right Father Busa was in putting that condition on my study of both ancient and modern languages. Indeed, that 80-year-old man turned out to be much younger than I was, and I was young. Enjoy the video and the conference. Biography, the Index Tomisticus. Roberto Busa was born in Vicenza on November the 28th, 1913. His family was originally from Louisiana, one of the seven municipalities of the Asiago Plateau, where there is a small district called Busa, now regularly inhabited by just one person. The second of five children, the future Father Busa spent his childhood wandering between the different railway stations to which his father, a station master, was posted. Among these were Genoa, Bolzano, Verona and Belluno. And it was in Belluno that in 1928 the young Roberto entered the seminary to continue his high school studies. Among his classmates was Albino Luciani, the only Pope I could address as a friend, he said. 
Father Boza had fond memories of those years spent in study, prayer and the cheerful companionship of the other seminarians. Their moments of recreation also figure in those memories, such as the many football games, a sport at which the young priest was so bad that his friends insisted he play for the other side. In 1933, at the age of 20, Bouza decided to join the Society of Jesus, motivated by both vocation and a desire to be a missionary. In 1940, shortly after being ordained, he came up before his superior, who had the task of assigning him to an area of expertise within the order. Father Bouza's recollection of that moment was always very clear, and he often recounted it in the form of a dialogue. Superior. Father Bouza, would you like to be a teacher? Bouza, well, n- not really, no. Superior, with a huge smile. All right, but you'll do it just the same. And so Father Bouza was shipped off, in his words, to the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, where in 1946 he was awarded a degree in philosophy with a, th- a thesis entitled La Terminologia Tomistica dell'Interiorità, which would later be published as a monograph in 1949. The subject of the thesis represents a focal point in the life of Father Bouza. Indeed, While studying the vocabulary used by Thomas Aquinas to express the topic of interiority, Father Bouza sensed that in the text of Thomas, the idea was conveyed by the word in, and words beginning with the prefix in, where the latter does not have the function of negation. In order to support this hypothesis with objective evidence, Bouza began to organise the words of the texts of Thomas Aquinas. Whenever a text contained an occurrence of in, or any of the above-mentioned words, formed with the prefix in, he wrote it on a card, adding a small part of its left and right context. Finally, he added the reference, work, section, etc. This analytical work convinced Bouza that I would be doing myself and others a huge favour if he could find a secure and automatic way to organise and manage the words in a large set of texts. And it was, was, and it was with this idea in mind that in New York in 1949, Father Bouza sat at the desk of Thomas J. Watson Sr., founder of IBM. At this meeting, Father Boozer asked Watson if IBM would use its own computers to work on the texts of St Thomas. After hearing him out, Watson asked Boozer to submit his proposal as a written draft so it could be presented to the software engineers of the company. A few days later, Boozer was again summoned to Watson's office to receive project feedback from the IBM technicians. The verdict was negative. What the priest asked was impossible. And Father Boza was considered more American than the Americans. A kind way to say crazy as a fox. However, never take no for an answer. Father Boza was not discouraged. In fact, he challenged Watson further. Focusing first on the company's methodology... Does it seem reasonable to you to say that something is impossible without even trying? And then on its pride. In the reception area of Watson's office, Father Boza had picked up and pocketed a piece of paper on which was printed a trendy slogan, popular at IBM at the time. It read, The difficult we do right away. The impossible takes a little longer. Father Boza pulled out the piece of paper and put it in Watson's hand, saying, You can have this back then. What it claims is not true. Struck by this act, Watson decided to place his trust in the visionary Italian Jesuit, 
by giving the go-ahead to initial funding. There was, however, one condition. Father Boozer must always remember that IBM stood for International Business Machines and not International Boozer Machines. The initial results obtained with that funding was an archive of 12 million punch cards, which filled a row of cabinets 90 metres long, and it weighed 500 tonnes. The archive was initially put together and located in Gallarate, where Father Buza had been sent by his order. He was staying at the Aluisianum Philosophical Institute. IBM would finance the Index Thomisticus project for the next 30 years, publishing its 54 volumes in the late 70s and early 80s. In the early 90s, it was published on CD-ROM and finally appeared on the internet in 2005. In November of 2010, Father Boozer sealed his relationship with IBM by gifting them his own copy of the index on the occasion of the company's centenary, 1911-2011. to It ranks among the greatest, the greatest of IBM's achievements. Together with the Brown Corpus, the Index Thomisticus is considered to be the first textual corpus recorded in a machine-readable format. Today we would say digital. It contains the complete works of Thomas Aquinas, a total of 118 texts, to which Father Boozer added a further 61, by as many authors, all connected to Thomas Aquinas in some way. The total number of words is around 11 million. Father Boozer passed away on August 9th, 2011, at the Aluisianum in Gallarate. He led the Index Thomisticus project right up until the final weeks of his life. To my specific questions on various decisions which needed to be taken with regard to the corpus, he always replied with a wisdom deriving from his experience of more than half a century on computer text management. He had been thinking for some years about organising event, an event for his 100th birthday. Not for the purpose of honouring himself, certainly, but rather as a way to use the occasion to raise funds for the continuation of the Index Thomisticus project. The importance of Father Buza. Universally recognised as one of the pioneers of computational linguistics, Father Buza was a visionary with his feet on the ground. Capable of aiming at huge long-term goals, he was intelligent enough to understand and rigorously implement the individual, sometimes tedious, steps which the facts indicated were necessary for the overall project. The significance of Father Buza and the Index Thomisticus is both considerable and widespread, transcending the disciplinary boundaries of corpus linguistics and medieval philosophy. This is demonstrated by the fact that, even without knowing it, people benefit daily from the results obtained from the project which led to the Index Thomisticus. Today's ubiquitous relationship with digital texts allows us to forget how many seemingly trivial procedures are in fact the applied result of years of basic research, from the encoding of alphanumeric characters to the operations of search engines. In this sense, the Index Thomisticus, created with the aim of analysing the texts of St Thomas with a computer, was an extraordinary project of fundamental research, whose design, development and testing would ultimately enter all our homes. And that's the reason IBM decided to invest in Father Buza, and in that project that was more American than the Americans. Watson was far-sighted and realised at the very beginning of the Information Society, what huge benefits there would be for a company which could provide automatic management services for large sets of texts. Insisting on the reproducibility of results even in the humanities, 
Father Buza was able to reconnect the natural sciences with the humanities, two areas which are still too often kept separate in many academic organizations. In this sense, one of the most important contributions of Buza consisted in bringing scientific rigor to research in the humanities, putting in place a process which survives to this day. When asked how he saw the future of computational linguistics, Father Buza replied that the discipline would experience a big boom thanks to increasingly powerful computers, the widespread diffusion of digital technology, and the ease of transfer of information across the internet. This boom would lead to excellent results, but it would also be necessary to deal with the risk of upsetting the identity of the discipline, which he considered to be closely linked to the data. He foresaw that the wide availability of NLP tools, annotated corpora, lexicons and ontologies would run the risk of being incorrectly exploited. Buzak believed the greatest danger lay in considering computational linguistics not as a discipline aimed at doing things better, but rather as a tool to do things increasingly faster. He feared that the computational linguists of the third millennium would become picky about dealing with the data, which should be their bread and butter, and lose the humility to check each analysis, preferring to process huge masses of texts quickly and approximatively without even reading a line. I believe this is the true legacy of Father Buza, a rigorous, objective and, in a word, scientific approach to linguistic data, which must remain at the centre of computational linguistic research, instead of allowing the field to merely become a hunting ground for the best performing tool or the largest tree bank. Father Buza donated his own huge archive to the Università Cattolica. Organised according to an almost maniacal order, the archive recounts a large part of the history of computational linguistics, through letters, conference brochures, handouts, project reports and records of meetings. When sifting through the archive, one comes up against many historic figures from the discipline and the unique opportunity to glimpse the most personal aspects of their relationship with Father Buza. The archive also talks about Buza the Jesuit priest, exuding the ardent faith that accompanied him always. The archive has been recently catalogued in the library of Università Cattolica in order to make it accessible to those students and scholars who wish to physically consult its con contents, enhancing it and making it a lively and a useful historical record for future generations of computational linguists as well as others.